In this video, I'm going to talk about parent pages in InDesign and how powerful and helpful they can be with your design. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to design wedding invitations. InDesign is a wonderful program for layouts and especially for long documents where some things on, the, on each page are going to be similar. Uh, but some things might be a little different. And this is a great example of this. We often use InDesign for um, table numbers, which you're going to see here, escort and place cards, and also envelope addressing when it comes to stationary design. So right now I have this table number file set up. I have all of my table numbers all the way down to page 10. And they are fully set up here, but I've decided that I want to add this squiggly green element to all the pages. So of course I can just grab it and use a copy command. And then on page two, I can use paste in place, alt control shift V. If I wanna do that all the way down, but what if I had like a hundred of these? What if it was something that, you know, I didn't wanna spend the time doing? I can use a parent page for this. So you're gonna go into your pages panel and you'll already see your A parent page up here. You can have as many of these as you want and you can apply them however you want throughout your document. A is the one that's typically going to apply to all of the pages uh, automatically, but you can take that off and change, exchange it with another or just remove it entirely if you want. So we'll just click into our A parent and then anything we do on here is going to apply to all of the pages automatically or any of the pages that we tell it to. So I'm going to take this off of page one and just do a paste in place here on our parent page and you can make sure that's centered to the page, it looks really good. And then when we go back to page one, we see that, but we also see it all the way down to page 10. So a parent page basically means something that is gonna be applied to all of the pages. But say I wanted to use a blue one on the even numbers for some reason. So then I would add a new parent. This is just gonna be B, which works because we're gonna go with blue. Um, I'm going to paste in place this guy again and change it to this blue color. So when I go back, I see all of my pages still have the green one. So I'll need to select the pages that I wanna apply the blue one to. Let's say even numbers, so I'll select two, four, six, eight, and 10, right click and do apply parent to pages. And you can always do none if you just wanna take the parent page elements off entirely, but I want B. So now we have the green one on pages one and three and the blue one on pages two and four all the way down because we individually selected those pages that we wanted the parent page to be applied for. Now what you'll see is I can edit this piece. So if I needed this to be in a different color, for instance, pink, these colors are not going well together. Don't judge me on that. Um, I'm not going to accidentally edit that piece, but if there was a parent page element that I wanted to edit on one or two pages, then I'll just do control shift and click on this. And now it is editable and I can change that to pink in case we wanted that page to just be pink. And you'll see it didn't affect any of the parent page elements on the other pages. I still can't select these. They are locked, which is really nice. So in general, you'll want to use a parent page for something that you want to be the same on almost every page. And then if you need to change something, what's great about this, if I'm setting up um, envelope addressing and I have something that's on the envelope that's the same on every envelope, like a little element or the return address. If I'm setting up return address and guest addresses together, um, I'll put the return address as a parent page. So then if it turns out I accidentally used the wrong font or color or something, I can go in and change it. So say we need, oh, not green. We really want this to be yellow. You change it on a parent. And since we had control shift, click this one and change it to pink, it is no longer attached to the parent page, um, but all the other ones are. So everything that still had that A parent page attached is going to change to yellow. Now, typically in stationary design, we use this for elements, but in other types of publications, you can use it in different ways. So for instance, here's a book project that I am working on, and let's just go to this page 12. So we have this text starting with after World War I, and we have a few parent pages already created. So our A parent has a text box that kind of starts halfway down in case we wanted to add a title or picture or something up here. 
So I'll go back to page 12 and say I wanted to add a picture up here. So I wanted this text to just scooch down and start a little. Then I can just right click and do apply parent and we'll apply our a parent. OK, and that text box moved down to how it was on the parent page. But the text that was in the box didn't actually change. It still starts with after World War II and just moved down according to the parent page instructions. So when you're doing a publication, this can be a way to basically change the entire layout of a bunch of your pages to something new. Um, and all of the text and things that are linked will automatically kind of fill in there. So it's a really powerful tool and I hope that you can find a bunch of ways to use it. If you have any questions about how to use this, please let me know. And while you're here, check out some of our other Adobe tutorials. If you are interested in becoming a stationary designer, I have a membership just for stationary designers that I'll link in the description of this video called Stationary School. Thanks everyone.